I'm going to ask the Lord to help me to preach a two-hour message in, you know, a reasonable amount of time. It's Larry, right? Larry. So uh, that's, that's the goal. And we can pick it up next week so, with some more information. We don't have to cover everything in, uh, today. But uh, what's been on uh, my heart, I trust it was, is from the Lord, is an understanding of the season that we live in and what the Lord is doing <clears throat> in, this, in this hour of, uh, of, of, of history, of humanity, the, not only national but global and we all know of the, of the chaos that we have been, uh, have been observing over the last year. And we're in a difficult place right now. And what are, what are we to do? And what is the Lord saying? So part of this is looking just for a moment at where we are at now. And also, what was the message of, uh, of Resurrection Week? What's the message that Jesus sent not only through his death, burial, resurrection, and redemption, but immediately after <clears throat> his resurrection, he was among the disciples for 40 days, right? And they, they, there was more going on. He was, he was teaching about the kingdom, and he was still discipling. See, Jesus was the consummate discipler. And what was transpiring during that time, I'm going to select uh, out of that one occasion, of the 10 appearances that he had over those 40 days, there were 10 times, that he appeared to the disciples in small groups. Some was one, sometimes it was a, 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 one of the ladies, sometimes it was two ladies, then it was two disciples, and then seven disciples, then 11, then 12, and you know Thomas, and all of that, 10 times. And we covered them last week, of all those. And what was, one of, the, one of them is, uh, to me, uh, very interesting in what it has to say to us. What's the, what's the word of the Lord to us today? And I think it's, it's captured in, in this uh, in this, what we show, so, showed on, briefly on that video, uh, the harvest is now plenteous, but the laborers are few. What has transpired in our culture is done something to the culture and their, how they, their worldview, what they're experiencing mentally and emotionally. And I think there's, a, there's an emptiness. If you could say something, among, in our culture, there's an emptiness. There's a, there's a need for something, and they don't know what it is. But they can see the collapse. They can see the conflict. They can see the division. The Bible says any nation divided, any house divided against itself can't stand. And if you would say, use one word to, de to describe America at this point, it would be we are in division uh, on every level. And there's a, the enemy is behind the division because God is a uniter. The devil is a divider. So he's having a pretty good run, run at it. And that division uh, should not be ever in God's church, in the people of God, because we are one in the spirit. We're all under the same, born. if you're born again. Now, if you're not born again, you're not in the church, so that's another subject. But together, one of the things we always guard against is, is when the enemy be begins to develop some kind of division. So anyway, that's what he's been up against. Now, I put this little list together. You know, each one of these can be depressing in and of itself, but just to give you a... This is what's happening now, and you, you're aware of most of it, okay? And it, un, the, the subject here is under the, uh, the mystery of iniquity. That's what the Bible calls it, the mystery of iniquity. Iniquity is another word. It's anomia, and it means lawlessness. The mystery of the lawlessness in the land. And if you would watch out there and look at what's going on, you say, how can they do that? How can they think that? How can they, why do they do that? Uh, in our culture. You know, you have a, a, a law in Georgia, for instance, and they wanted to increase the voter ability to vote to make it more available and to do it better. And now, uh, you know, you're, you're, uh, you call your name. And if you look at what the law does, it's good, but they have to call you a name. And then uh, Coca-Cola, you know, they got a big issue with it. We call them now woca cola you know, there's no more Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, and then they take out the Major League Baseball. That's gone. You know, so what? It's the mystery of iniquity. What is? What is this all about? Why is the? Are everybody on edge? Why so much hatred? Uh, what is all of that about? So here's the list. It's number one is political chaos, then political lawlessness, where people do stuff in the political system and get away with it. There's no recriminations. There's no. There's no. Uh, uh, nobody's brought to justice in it. Just happens. It's law. It's a mystery of lawlessness. There's voter fraud. There's border chaos. We have every kind of law that you could need to 
to maintain our, the security of our borders, it's not followed. It's lawlessness, the mystery of lawlessness. There's a, the gender confusion thing going on. You know, it's all about the sexual, sexuality and the gender fluidity. And I just, uh, I'm a member of just signed up for the uh, uh, Planet Fitness. Planet Fitness. And then somebody tells me, well, what the, because they were sued, because one of the men who on a per particular day thought they were a girl, this is, this is classically mental illness, because I took abnormal psychology when I was an undergraduate. If you don't, uh, if you don't know what you are and you're, what your gender is, that's a mental illness. And now they, the boys went into the girls' room and they threw them out and then they got sued for a bunch of money. So guess what uh, the uh, Planet Fitness does now? Uh, the boys can go into the girls' lockers now. That's okay there. So w we say this is the mystery of iniquity. Say that's a mystery how you can actually think like that. And we'll talk about why that is in a moment. And, uh, and then they want to just uh, read about the, the children. They, they can do chemical castration now with children. So if the child uh, has been taught in public school that they may not be the particular gender and they feel like they're another gender, they take them to the doctor and they, they uh, chemically castrate them. That's what they do. And the law is now that you cannot stop that from happening, that they, that they have to follow through on that, they, that we have no say on that. The, uh, the culture has no say. The parents want the child to be a boy and it's a girl or a girl and it's a boy. And they bring them up and they're six years old. And they can, they have, that's what they do. The mystery of iniquity and how much of this is connected somehow to sexual immorality is, is kind of obvious. Uh, the, the abortion on demand, you know, that was dialing it back a little bit in the last <coughs> administration. <clears throat> and now the, the, it's Katie bar the door. They want Planned Parenthood to kill as many children as they possibly can, but they want to carve them up, take their body parts and sell them and that's all good, uh, make more money. <clears throat> And it's the mystery of iniquity. The Bible says that is going to be in place before, the, before Jesus comes. And we're going to be living in the culture that is dealing with that. And we're going to be like Lot. You know, it says, as it was in the days of Lot. And, and, and Lot's soul was vexed because of the behavior, the conduct of, the, of that culture. Uh, the fe federal financial insanity. So uh, what's another two trillion here? It's three trillion there. And now we're in debt... 30 trillion. And people don't understand. They say trillion. Well, well, how much is a trillion? Well, to give a context on that, how many is a trillion seconds? A trillion seconds. Some of you know this already. Is that two years, five years, ten years? Seconds. Oh, maybe it's a hundred years. No, a trillion seconds is 32,000 years. Just one trillion. We are 30 trillion in debt. So now the goal is the reset, collapse the economy, and then China is now, be, and I'm going to be too depressing about this, but you need to know what's going on. They, have, they are instituting a, glo, a uh, digital currency. That's the next step. Digital currency is coming where you, you no longer have the, the money. You will have, uh, you, just have your, you just have your digital wallet with you. Everything's going to be digital wallet. You know, they want to do a, a, a digital passport. Whether you got your shot, they tried that. That didn't fly very well. But China is moving ahead radically, taking the big dive into the digital uh, world with digital money. And they say they want to control the world economy because now it's controlled through the dollar. But the dollar is collapsing. Something is going to take its place. They're already going digital. And that's, that's in, in the reset. That's going to be part of the reset because then they can control your money. Uh, then they can do negative interest because you go, you put your money in the bank, you get so much interest, not very much as a percentage. Well, they want to do a negative interest. To keep your money in the bank, they take a percentage from you. That's what they want to do. Uh, the problem is people are smart, so guess what? You're going to take more money out of my account, I'm taking my money out. But then I have paper dollars, that means something. They say, well, we're going to do away with the paper dollars. Now all your money will be digital. Everything that you own will be in a digital account. So now they're, they're, the next step will be there will be a negative interest. Uh, will take a certain amount out of your paycheck to uh, maintain the stability of the nation. They'll have all kinds of excuses for that. But the point is, it's, in, it's financial insanity. Not one of you would get card after card and just run up payments, payments. The thing about it is, you can't print your own money, and the government can, but it's, it's doomed for, for uh, collapse. Gun violence, we can see it over the last several weeks. And uh, then the goal of the, uh, of the current administration is to take away guns from all the honest people and just let all the bad people have them. Then how about the cancel culture? It's uh, 
Major League Be Baseball. Whatever you do, if you're going to do something and it makes sense, and it's a, of a conservative bent, and it makes sense, and you're not in line, if you've not lined up to the political correctness, you will be punished. We will cancel you. This is the same as hatred in the, uh, First John. John says, uh, hatred is the same as murder. It's the same thing. It's murder. You, wanna, what, you don't want to just disagree with somebody. You want to kill them. And you want to deplatform them. You know, if you, do, if you disagree with the current philosophy that's being promoted, we will cancel you. That's another way of saying cancel you so you are a non-entity. We get rid of you off of the platform and you can't have a voice. That's driven out of hatred, but it's a spirit of Antichrist in it. That's what's in it. And that which is true and good and right is going to be uh, suppressed. They will suppress the truth and unrighteousness in, in John, first John. Uh, uh, that may be the wrong, wrong location. But they will suppress the truth in unrighteousness. It'd be unrighteous. That's the truth. We're going to suppress it. We're unrighteous, and we don't want that truth getting out. That's already underway. And then internationally, China is after Taiwan. They're building up their military. They're building up their navy. We have just diminished our budget in America, and we have, we're more concerned about social issues and transgender armies and so forth, and we're, we're being weakened. Russia has now developed in the, the hypersonic missile, which goes at like 6,000 miles an hour. It can take out your, uh, your aircraft carriers in a minute. It's hard to do, do anything with it. Now they have something called a nuclear torpedo. It'll travel thousands of miles by, led by GPS with a nuclear missile on it. And the idea is to let it, to blow it up right off the shore of major cities and have a tidal wave that will just demolish whole cities. That's, that's already what they have. They already have an Arctic. In the Arctic, there's a, a, a base that they're putting up there. They're, uh, they're amassing troops on the border of Ukraine. In Iran, uh, we're just redoing the nuclear treaty. That's all back underway, and that's just a joke. They're going to have a nuclear weapon. Their terrorism, it's growing. ISIS is now regaining strength. They were, they were pretty much defeated and they were being you know, taken care of. Now that's all over. ISIS is being re, re, uh, re-strengthened. And of course, North Korea with their renewed missiles and their launches and all that stuff going on over there. So that's what's happening in, Amer in, in the world. Now there's, there's two things going on here. Number one, it's the advancement of the powers of darkness. And the second is the judgment of God that's on the nations. There's, there's two things happening, and here's what I believe, that be, and I mentioned it earlier, that because of that, men and women are in a place where they feel very empty. They just don't know what to do and what's going on, and they're looking for something. They're just like wandering around in, in the fog, looking for something to say, there's safety here. It's like the ark, you know, there's got an ark. Here's, here's what it is. There's, the door is still open. And, and there is going to be opportunity upon opportunity for you and I to go out, for you and me, to go out and reach people because they're, they're ready. This is the fields are white under harvest, and uh, we just need some laborers to go out. And I want you, and, I, and I, this is something that I want to carry with me over these weeks, that, that God is going to open up opportunities for me to advance the kingdom of God by... by Speaking into the life of someone who's saying, I just don't know, I don't know what's going on in my life. I need something. We were at the prison last Tuesday. We do the prison ministry there. We had a great prison ministry. <clears throat> and I'm ministering to the, to the men there. And it's very, it's an unusual experience because this doesn't happen in churches too much. But that prison, at the end of the message, they all applaud. They all applaud. It's like, what's about that about? They applaud. Because there's something, you're speaking into their need. And at the end of the table, we had about 15 guys. We're building back up. We usually about 30. We're going to build up. We're going to bring that movie that we showed on Wednesday, Flywheel. We're bringing it to the, to the prison. And we're going to show that to kind of, you know, get the thing going. And at the end of the table is the guard. And the guard is back there. I won't tell you his name because he might show up one day. And he follows us out. Nice fella, about 35 years of age. And he comes out all the way out. And he says, uh, you know what? You know what you're talking about? There's that born again thing. I, I said, I need, I need something. See, he's just listening to the talk. He said, I need something. He said, I'm not a good person. He's the guard. He said, see, did you see all those guys, how they look at me? 
He said, because I'm not good to them, and I mistreat them. This guy's confessing right outside there. He said, and I need to know, I need to know about the being born again. I believe this is what I've, I've sensed the Lord is saying, that people are in a place now where they're looking. They're waiting for somebody to just open their mouth. And you just tell them, Jesus is the answer. And then you can minister to them, bring them to church, bring them to the men's thing, whatever it is. But they are, it's like the fields, they're ripe for the harvest. And we don't have the labors to go out. We're not, we're not been attuned. We don't see ourselves being sent out into that harvest field. Now you see on the door when you're going out, it says, uh, attention, you are now entering the mission field. That's what I want you to get. And I want you to be praying, Lord, just give me someone. Show me someone. Let me... Let me minister to somebody. Maybe be kind to somebody. Invite them to church. Well, however the Lord would lead you, because you've got to be led by the Spirit of God. And you've got to have the Word of God. And you've got to have the power of God, right? So that being said, I, I am going to, uh, I'm going to ask God how I'm going to go about this here. Let me just read this through and without too many comments, and I want to go to a portion of Scripture. Matthew 24, 9 through 13 is Jesus' uh, <clears throat> teaching on the end times. Okay, Matthew 9, uh, Matthew 24, the whole thing is about the end times. But then he says, this is, because they asked him, what is it going to be like when you return? And here's a portion of it. Verse 9 through 13 of Matthew 24. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. Now that doesn't necessarily mean physically killed. They're going to cancel you. They're going to, it'll be character assassination. That's what it's going to be. And you shall be hated of all the nations. Why? For my name's sake. So you, if you're a closet Christian, then you'll be okay. But as soon as you come out of the closet, you're in trouble because then they're, then they're going to they're gonna cancel you. They're going to mock you and whatever it's going to be. It goes on to say, and then shall many be offended. You're going to offend people by being a believer. Because the Bible says those who, who desire to live godly in Christ shall suffer persecution. Okay, you want to live for God? This is what we're going to do with the men, but it's for the ladies. You want to run, you want to run with this? Because where we're going with this is where Jesus went, and, and they said, uh, uh, Jesus said, you can't uh, drink this cup. Oh, we can drink the cup. They didn't understand what he was talking about. He said, I'm going, I'm going, they're going to kill me on the cross. And guess what? Every one of them was martyred. He said, can you drink the cross? Can you be hated? Can you be mocked? Can you be canceled? What, what, what would turn you away? What would cause you to deny the Lord? If there's anything, you, you're just not going to make it to the end. And uh, that's what it says in the rest of the scripture. We'll go on. Is that they're, you, they're going to offend, going to, many are going to be offended because of you, and they're going to betray one another. This is going to be a little bit down the road, but this happened already uh, in history, in uh, the, the German, in the Nazi uh, era. The, the children would turn in their parents for not saluting right, or not reading Mein Kampf, or not doing whatever. They turned in their own parents. Because they were so devoted to the cause uh, as the, the, the powers of darkness deceived the culture and they gave allegiance to the, to the government. That's what they did. And Hitler represented the powers of darkness and that antichrist spirit. And, the, and from the young ones, and they went and got into the schools. And they said, what we're going to do is we're going to get the children on our side and we're going to give them allegiance to the government. That's what we want because that is the spirit of antichrist fundamentally said is you put your faith in the Redeemer, which is government. The government becomes the Savior and the Redeemer, and you trust us, but they, they want to peel you away from religious faith and belief. And that's, that's going on in our schools today. They'll betray one another and hate one another. That is hate is murder. It's, a, it's, uh, it's all across the planet. And many false prophets shall arise, they're all over the television, and they shall deceive many. All kind of deception going on on, the, on television with all kind of false doctrines. And because iniquity shall abound, lawlessness is, is abounding right now, all across America and the planet. And, and the, the, the Bible says the man of lawlessness is going to be revealed. And this is what it says. And the love of many is going to grow cold. They're going to lose their love for one another. Now, interestingly, that word love there is agape, which is a biblical word for God's love in a person. And if you'd read it like that, they say the love of God in people is going to actually grow cold. Now, that could take place at, uh, through certain sets of circumstances. And then, it, then this verse, which is 13. But he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. 
Now, so the key there is endurance. Endurance is required to make it to the end of the thing. All right, so that's what we're going to need. And that is, how you do that is this. You're in prayer, in word, in fellowship. Here's what the enemy does. He, he's going to say, no, I'm going to take you out of fellowship. And that's a, that's a deception and a strategy because of whatever. You can come up with a number of things. Of course, COVID-19 was the big thing and shut everything down put everybody at home, and you can argue the, the validity of that, the value of it, but there are a lot of said, no, that was a plan of the enemy, especially in California, where they, uh, you know, th when they came in, in uh, when they locked you up or locked the place down, they'd come in, in your church. I've got a video, I, I wish I would have put it up there, I'll get it for next week, but this is in Canada, and the, and the four or five officers come into the guy's church on resurrection morning, and the pastor drives them out of the place. I mean, drove them out. Would not tolerate it until they just all backed off and just left it. You, when you see it, you'll be amazed. But you, we need endurance. We need to know who we are. We're not just some little religious uh, people. We're, we're kingdom men and women. We walk in the power of God. We've got the word of God. But you need, you need prayer, you need the word, and you need fellowship. And you, uh, you eliminate every, every one of those, and you start to diminish spiritual life. It's a word of wisdom. Because the Bible says don't neglect assembling, right? 2 Thessalonians 2, 7 through 8. 2 Thess Thessalonians 2, 7 and 8 says this. The mystery of iniquity. That's this. We're looking at this. This is a mystery. This is, this is under the subject. The, uh, the, the spirit of Antichrist is at work. That's what it is. It doth already work. Only he that now restrains will restrain until he be taken out of the way, and then shall the wicked one be revealed. It's always been a question. Who's the, uh, who's the restrainer? And here's where they goof it up. They think this, the restrainer is somehow leaves. They say, well, that's the rapture of the church. No, it's not, because if you read the first part of the chapter, it says that the, uh, the rapture can't take place until the falling away happens and the man of Christ is revealed. Only then can it take place. So that clarifies that. So what restrains this Antichrist? And I, I believe it's the Holy Spirit. But most people have thought of that, well, that the Holy Spirit is leaving the planet. But that's not it at all. It doesn't say he leaves the planet. It's that word restrains, <clears throat> is, it, when he's taken out of the way, it means all he does is steps aside. That's all he does. Not that he goes anyplace. He's restraining until he steps aside at the time. He said, at this time, I'm stepping aside, and here it comes. Some think it's the uh, archangel Michael. I don't know if there's validity to that, because he's the, he's the guardian of Israel. Because Israel goes under severe persecution. It's like, like uh, Holocaust times 10. And then the church is persecuted, and everything goes haywire when he goes to the temple and declares himself to be God. As it was in the days of Noah and Lot, he says they were eating, drinking, marrying, giving in marriage. What they were doing, he said life was going on at normal, like it is now. What about normal? You get up, you go to work, you do this, that, and the other thing. People are getting married, people are eating, they're drinking, and the whole culture is collapsing. It's the collapse of the culture and global collapse is happening right now as we speak. And the forces of, 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 the, of the world are arraying themselves against one another. And we're going to get to a point when we get financial collapse, things start to really dramatically change and we have to be ready and we have to be endure. But it's opportunity, the whole thing, this is opportunity. This is what you were born for. You were born for such a time as this. This is the moment where we can go and reach people. That's why, that's why we do the things that we do. I, I love to, to be in those places where people are hungry for God. Best place I love to go is a prison. I love being in prison. And uh, just being with those guys who are just waiting. They're just, they're just like, tell us what to do. And uh, it's going to be with, these, uh, with the men's group, and we're going to see something great happen. Now, the second thing that's underway, there's one is, it is just sin happening in the mystery of iniquity. The other is, and I don't pretend to say how much one or the other, it's God's judgment on the planet. Because we have now killed over a million children in the womb since 1973. 63 million, I'm, I think a billion. 63 million in America alone. And God, that's the shedding of innocent blood. That's what brought judgment on Israel when they, when they worship to Tophet and they worship Molech and they kill the children. He said, that's one, is, that's, I'm going to deal with that. And you know what? Now we've got a new administration. Katie, bar the doors. We don't care how many kids you kill. Anytime you want it. It's a abortion on demand. We want to kill those children. It's a spirit of insanity and it's a spirit of murder and it comes right from hell. 
And God says, I'm going to, that's what I'm going to deal with. And not this, I don't know, the, the, with this COVID and everything, but a plague. God says at the end times it's going to become plagues. But it's all over the world. Why? Because the whole world is doing it. But it all comes from, guess where? America. Where did it start? Albany. Where was the murder capital shedding of blood in the whole planet? New York City. What got the, the highest dose of that? That was New York City. They had the most death rate. But the whole planet is killing the children, and the whole planet has been touched by this plague. There's no telling what the future holds. That's the bad news, but we live, we're going to live in that environment and be used by God because we're going to be bright lights in the midst of a dark and perverse nation. That's, that's the goal. That's why you've been born for this hour. And, and you need to embrace that. And, but you need to be ready for it. You can't live this la di da nice little Christian life. You've got to be born again and filled with the Spirit of God. Before, before uh, let me just read Romans 1. This is the credible chapter. I'm just going to select a few verses and then we're going to go. Help me, Jesus. Because that when they knew God, they glorified Him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. That describes us today. Verse 24 and 5 of chapter 1. Wherefore God also gave them up. Now God is intervening. He says, now I'm going to give them up to uncleanness through the lusts of their own hearts to dishonor their bodies between themselves who exchanged the truth of God into a lie or changed it into a lie and they worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. In verse 28. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge... God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Now, to be reprobate, you don't think right anymore. You lose your sense of virtue, what's right and wrong. You lose that. That's what a reprobate is. And you have no grace. And you're abandoned to error by God. That's what it says. You're abandoned. That's what reprobate. I abandon you to error by God. Ooh. So those two things are happening concurrently. And no, you know, nobody knows which are they, but we're seeing... This, this global shifting that's going on, and we're going to do great things. Now, let me just end with this. This is really good. Now, here's, here's John 21, chapter 21. Go there, John 21. And this is the, the post-resurrection experiences and the training that Jesus gives the disciples. And it's a whole section here, but I can't read the whole thing. I would have if we had more time. Verse 1. And after these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And this is how he did it, how he showed himself. And they were together, I'll just say seven disciples, verse 3. And Simon Peter, who's the leader of the church, what does he say? He saith unto them, what? I'm going fishing. Okay, and guess what? He's a leader, so guess what they all say? We're going fishing with you. Now, Jesus said earlier to, to Peter... He said, uh, you, you fish, you're not particularly good at it because every time I see you, you've got empty nets. And I've got to tell you which side of the boat to throw your net on. Of course, that is a little sovereignty of God going on. But he said, I'm going to make you what? Fishers of... See, that's the harvest thing. That's the call of God on your life and my life. Not just them. He said, that, no, that's, that's the call of God on your life, to be fishers of men. And he's going to train us up to be workers. God gave some apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers for the equipping of the saints for the what? For the work of the ministry. That's what we do. We work in the ministry. That's our primary calling in life, to work in the ministry. And then we have a day job to pay the bills. That's how it works. But here's what it was. He said, I'm going to make you fishers of men, but you what? What are you doing? You've got all of these new uh, 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 disciples coming on board. I've just raised from the dead... There's all this opportunity for you, and you're going to go back and fish. Now, I, th I mean, there's nothing wrong with fishing because that was their livelihood. But he's making a point here, and he's, and he's challenging them. And he says to them, uh, and they were out fishing, and at the end of that verse, they caught how much? They didn't catch a thing again. So now the Lord is going to use this. He said, you're out doing, he said, you're in the wrong place at the wrong time. He said, you're supposed to be someplace else in this fishing thing. That's fine, but that's for another day. What I got you to do is you, you're going to go and fish for men. That's what you're supposed to be doing. And you're going back to the fishing. You're missing this thing. And uh, so anyway, he tells them to cast the net out on the boat, and they get 153 fish. 
So it's like the nets are like our outreach evangelism, and we're going to get the net out there, however it looks. It could be the men's thing. It could be the prison thing. It could be whatever. And we're going to bring the fish in. And God, is, he knows exactly how many are in the nets. And he said, but you need the nets. You need to be out fishing in the right place. But if you're in God's will, you'll catch something. If you're not, your net is going to be empty. Because you're not, your mindset is on your life and what you're getting out of this life. And it's okay, but they say, my calling is to fish for men. That's what we do. Oh, I say, that's what I do. That's what you do, not just me. That, that's what you do. That's what we do. That's why we've been born for such a time as this. The fields are white on the harvest. The labor is a few. We need people to go and reach people. How do you do that? You talk to them. You befriend them. You minister them in the power of the Spirit. First uh, Acts 1.8. You shall... Don't go any place until you, Jesus says in Luke, don't go any place until you receive power from on high. And he says, until you get that, don't go any place. But when you do, you're going to be my witnesses in, in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria, uttermost parts of the earth. So I'm going to send you in the power of the spirit. You know how many people are not filled with the spirit? They're not baptized. They're not hungry. They don't have power. They don't have, there's no enthusiasm. There's, there's, a, there's just a little religious crust on them. And that's not going to do it. What people are looking for somebody who's, they're all in. That's why I say to the guys, are you all in? If you're not, that's okay. Understand that uh, over there. We're, we're all in. Jesus would say, come follow me. Uh, got another set of scriptures. Uh, and all together, they're going to have the marriage feast. So they all together made excuses. I've got this to do. I've got that to do. I've got this to do. And they come back. The servant said, there's still, there's still room. He said, go to the highways and to the hedges and go and go compel them to come in. You compel them to come in. Why? Because the hour's late. People are going to hell. People have not heard. And we are on a mission and we are commissioned to go and open our mouth and tell people about Jesus unashamedly, knowing that a whole bunch of them will spit in your face, knowing that they'll reject you, not knowing that you'll be canceled. You say, well, what are we going to do with this whole thing? We only had so many years because our life is like a vapor. And then he goes, anyway, Peter jumps in, the, you know, they're going, he jumps in the water, the rest of them come in the boat, you know, Peter's out there a little bit, you know, and he thought maybe he could walk on water again, I don't know, but he doesn't, and he, and he goes to shore, and uh, Jesus got food ready for him, you know, everything, a lot of things in the kingdom about food, you know, it started with uh, fruit on a tree, and marriage supper of the lamb, and communion, and all of that stuff, well, he's got food ready for them, he's got some fish there, and... Uh, and then when he had finished dinner, at verse 15, here's what he says in verse 15. And when he had dined, Jesus said to Simon Peter, because he's, he's the leader. He said, you big guy, you just got these guys out fishing. He said, but you know what? You didn't do so well after I'm going to the cross up there. He said, you denied me how many times? Three times. He said, okay, here's what we're going to do. Simon, because he loves Peter. He wants him to be a leader. Simon, lovest thou me more than these? Now what you think is, do you, do you love me more than these disciples over here? But you know what he was doing? He was pointing at, at the what? Fish. He's pointing at the fish. He's saying, uh, Peter, do you love me more than your occupation? Than your physical food? He's pointing at the fish. Not the other disciples. He's like, I always think he's talking to the, oh, I love you more than the rest of these disciples. He said, no, do you love me more than these fish? Because you're supposed to be out fishing for men. If you're going to love these fish, fishing more than you love men, you, you, you're not going to do very well. And he says this. He said, well, you, uh, you know. Uh, he said to him, uh, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to them, here's what you do. Feed my sheep. And they asked him a second time, Simon, do you love me? And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest that I love you. And he said to him, feed my... I'm sorry, first is feed my lambs. Those are like the little ones. Feed my little ones. That's like the new believers, I think. You know, the little ones? And he said, then feed my lambs. Those are the ones who are a little bit more mature. And then the third time, he says, Simon, Jonas, lovest thou me? Three times, just like he denied him three times, got him to confess him three times right there. And Peter was now grieved because he said unto him the third time, lovest thou me? And the Lord said unto him, knowest, he said, you know all things, Lord. You know that I love you. And Jesus said unto him, feed my lambs. Now, it's, it's, he says there's three words there, love, it, because there's three words in the Bible that are used for love. There's phileo, uh, eros, phileo, and agape. And he, he'll say, uh, uh, phileo thou me? That's like family love. It's a, it's a smaller term. And he gets to the lamps and he says, do you agape me? He said, I'm, I'm moving this thing up. How much do you love me? Do you, 
Do you agape me? That's an unconditional, never-ending love. Do you agape me? Now, it doesn't have to be. because The Bible says the, the agape of many is going to wax cold. A lot of them are going to re- leave them. I don't know. That sounds kind of weird. How many people that, why would people who have the love of God desert him? And when the factors are right and their life is on the line, things can change dramatically. That's why we prepare ourselves. So this, the point is this. Jesus is saying to them, post-resurrection, he's saying, I'm still teaching them. In Acts 1, it says he taught them about the kingdom. He said, you are born for such a time as this. You're going to be a mighty soul winner. You need the word of God. You need prayer. And you need the power of the Holy Spirit in you. That you walk in boldness. He said, when they got filled with the Spirit, they had boldness and they spoke the word. They were crying out to the Lord. Lord, fill us more with your Holy Spirit. That we might walk in boldness and heal the sick and all those things. And that's what's going to happen, I believe. Before the whole thing shuts down, that we're going to go up, we're going to be filled with faith and, and be like the, you know, the disciples on the way to the temple. And they say, gold and silver have I, have I none. But what I have, give I unto thee. Oh, I got money there. So. I was a, somebody put money in my pocket. Gold and silver have I none. But what I have, what they have? They have faith in God. They knew Jesus. They knew Jesus. And they said, and they pull him off the ground, and then, he, then the glory of God fell. Amen? Are you ready? All right. The harvest is plenteous, but the workers are few. Therefore, beseech the Lord of the harvest to send out workers into the harvest. You know what it means? Thrust out. That's what it means. Thrust them out into the harvest. You have a, wherever you go, you've got a harvest field. You've got people around you. You've got influence. You've got people you talk to. And, uh, and pray every day, Lord, just give me one. This week, Lord, give me one. This month, Lord, just give me one. You know the statistic, 85% of Christians never open their mouth and testify about Jesus in, the, in any given year. And 95% never win a soul to Jesus in their entire life. That's the sad facts of the matter. But that's going to change. Amen? All right, let's pray. Let's pray. Here's the song as we pray. And this is, this is the altar call song. All said and done. I remember singing this up at the Elam conferences, you know, up in Lima, New York, when we have conferences up there. And it was a call to reach out and touch people. Here I am, holy This is your altar call, so I want you to just let this minister to you. As for me, I will serve the Lord. Are, are, you, the, are you on board with that? Here or are you content with mediocrity? Holy So, Lord, I give myself to help the reaping, to gather precious souls unto you. When you can get it, let's sing it. Here I am, holy available. As for me. God's looking for a people who are willing to be counted in His glorious victory. Let's sing. Just put yourself there. We're available, Lord, for the work of your of your Son. 
work. He's commissioned us. He saved us. He's filled us. He empowers us. As salt, are we ready to save us? In darkness, are we ready to be light? God's seeking out a very special people to manifest His truth and His life. Yes to the Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I want to be useful. Well, let's stand for a moment. Lord, I thank you for this time that we've spent today, Lord. I ask you to bless this people. So the Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. The Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen.